Welcome back, everyone. I want to do a video today on winter prep and a task uh, that we need to do for winter. This is going to be a two part video. Part one is going to be for the mouse guards and entrance reducers. And part two will be a whole separate video, and that will be feeding, uh, how I feed with hive top feeders. I'm not going to demonstrate that because I'm actually going to try to get away with not feeding this year. Um, so I, I don't have any need to take you out to the yard and show how I feed, but it's simple enough to explain in an academic environment. So back to the mouse guards and entrance reducers. I used to use the regular old entrance reducer that comes with the hive kits with the, you know, the three and a half, four inch cutout, and then the little inch and a half cutout. And what I would do is I would set it on the smallest setting and I would take hardware cloth, quarter inch squares. And I would cut a piece and pin that to the uh, entrance reducer. I've then, you know, since then I've learned uh, from an old time beekeeper. And as you know, I, I, I listen to the old time beekeepers. I figure, why, you know, reinvent the wheel? These guys have been doing it for a long time and they just have a lot of little tricks. And uh, what this gentleman taught me was use corner beads. It's, it's, I think it's fantastic because you have to reduce your entrance in the winter time. And you have to put mouse guards on. Uh, anytime you can have a dual purpose item, I, you know, I'm a big fan of capitalizing on that and taking the opportunity for a, a two for one. So this will be your reducer and your mouse guard. So the things you're going to need for this is obviously the corner bead. I use the, the uh, metal corner bead. You're going to need a tape measure if you want to measure out. Uh, this will work for 10 frame equipment, eight frame equipment, or nukes, little five frame nukes. Um, you can measure your, your bottom board side to side inside to the rails, and then I'll give you your, your dimension for the, uh, what you want to cut that down to. I actually just kind of hold it up to the bottom board because a lot of the bottom boards, sometimes they're a little different. They're a little off. Like the one I just measured over there is 14 and three quarters. I have some that are a little over that, a little under that. So I just kind of take my, uh, um, the corner bead and just kind of hold it up and just eyeball. It doesn't have to be exact. You can have a little gap on the side. It's, it's no big deal. So you need your corner bead, the tin snips. I use the uh, shears. Uh, these aren't even made for tin snips. These are uh, for cutting telco wire. I'm a phone guy by trade. Um, you need a drill and I prefer the step down bit. And you do like, you know, three or four four so and that that'll give you the size opening it's about three eighths of an inch so bees can clearly they can easily get out of that and mice can't get through that i think mice uh, they say like if something's the size of a dime a mouse can get through it and that is nowhere near the size of a dime so and you need a scrap board because you don't want to drill into your workbench when you go through that thin piece of corner bead so it's going to be a real easy demonstration. I'll be right back. I'll set the camera up and try to get a really good angle. Okay. See you in a couple minutes. All right. So I'm all set up here. You don't need to see me. I'll try to keep this at the best angle so you can see. I'm, I, I wasn't the best at past videos and being mindful of the angle so everybody could see. I already cut this one to size. I kind of just held it up to the bottom board. I made one cut in there. So I already know what size that's going to be. However you decide you want to do it is fine. So we're just going to cut it the rest of the way. So here's what you're going to work with. Regular piece of corner bead cut down to the size uh, 15 and three quarters, 14 and three quarters for the uh, inside bottom. But this will work for nukes. It'll work for eight frame equipment, 10 frame equipment. I have 10 frame equipment, so that's what I'm set up for. And it's going to be real easy. Oh, you want a piece of scrap wood too, because when you drill into this, you don't want to drill into your workbench. So I try to get the holes kind of low, so to, to ensure that it's not going to, you know, be blocked by the bottom box. So Try to get your holes kind of low on, on the, uh, you know, close to the, the seam or the, you know, close to the angle of the corner bead. And you're just going to do like, I don't know, like three. 
invertida. One, two, three. Actually, that was two. There it is, three. One, two, three. There you go. So here's your big holes right there. They actually seem a little bit bigger on this one. I probably maybe I went four steps. So let's try four. You'll feel the step bit kind of like clicking for each interval. So uh, yeah, that's it. So there you go. And then I'll get a bond board. I'll be right back. All right, so here we are. I'll, I'll demonstrate how this actually goes on. You take your reducer. This one was cut a little short because some, you know, not all of your bottom boards are going to be the exact dimensions. So I usually make them a, a hair big and then kind of just shave them down at my bee yard when I'm going to put them in. Or you can probably even leave that gap and split the difference a little bit on each side. It's, it's not a big deal. But as you can see, you got your holes completely clear. And that's why you want to get those holes as low as possible. If you make them too high, it's going to look like that, and they may not be able to get out of there. So keep them like that. And then I always keep push pins in my arsenal of uh, utilities. And I just pin them on. This is a medium super, um, just for demonstration purposes. And who knows, maybe you're running mediums. That'll work too. And then you pin them up there real good. And I usually put some in the bottom too. Usually four pins does it. I'm not putting these pins in all the way. Uh, just because the box keeps moving because there's no weight to it. But that's what, that's what it's going to look like. So your entrance is reduced and it's a mouse guard. I usually do my mouse guards, I don't know, by Halloween, I'd say, by late October. Remember, I'm in New Jersey, though. Uh, there's people on one of the forums I'm on in Virginia. They're already talking about putting mouse guards on. I mean, bees are still active. There's, there's no reason to rush to get these on right now. And even if you had a cold snap where, you know, the bees are in the hive for like a week, even say, and a mouse gets in there. When they become active again, they're just going to chase the mouse out. So there's no like rush to get these on. I don't think I've never had a problem, but usually by Halloween, I, I would say get these these on. And what's great about this is um, if we re reference back to my last video, because I used oxalic acid, um, if, if you use uh, the wands type of um, oxalic acid vaporizer, you just got to pop these off. It's real easy. Just pop them off. You know, you take this off and you're done. You could, you could treat your hive. You can get that wand in there and, and you're done. Also, if you don't and you use the ProVac, the other device that I showed in my last video where this would stay on and you would treat from the back from a hole that you drill in, and then you could just put your rags across here to block your, your hive. I would still cover the whole entrance like with um, wet rags because you will get vapor leaking out of there. So I guess the mouse guards kind of tie in with treating your bees as well. So that's it for mouse guard slash entrance reducer for winter prep. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.